Hi guys, Tiffany here. I'm so excited to have you here with this video because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make my classic Christmas stocking. excited about this project because it is so fast, so fun, and it's just so classically Christmas. It's just the clean look. This is exactly what I think when I think of Christmas stocking, and it's super easy. This pattern I would consider a beginner-friendly pattern. Now, if you're an absolute beginner, like you literally just picked up a crochet hook for the first time, I highly recommend that you check out the basics videos where you see how to do a stitch or to place a stitch. That way you can avoid all the frustrations of diving into a project and not knowing what's going on. Now really all I'm using for this pattern is a half double crochet stitch. If you know how to do that, you're good. The only other stitch I use I think is a single crochet stitch for the loop. That's it. Also we're working in rounds. So if you're working around for the first time ever, I walk you through it. It's not a big deal. I think you're going to love this pattern. Now, if at any point in this video, you're enjoying the content, having a good time, please push that thumbs up button. It just gives me a high five, shows YouTube this is a good video. Also, if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday, covering a wide range of so many different types of crochet projects really trying to cover a wide spectrum, keep it interesting, keep it fun, and hit a lot of different people's interests. I also do like tips and tricks and fun giveaways. We have so much fun on this channel and you're not gonna wanna miss out. Also, if you haven't yet, check out my social media, my Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter, where you'll see behind the scene projects, things that are coming up, things to get ready for. I'll sh sometimes share what materials I'm going to use in a future tutorial if you want to be prepped and ready to go. I also share what I'm working on and some behind the scenes, behind the scenes things that are building up to come out in the future. And it's just a lot more information. And I think that's awesome for you to see that side. All right, so this pattern, US terminology, again, I think this is gonna be considered a beginner-friendly pattern. Uh, if you wanna get your hands on the pattern, I'll put the link in both the description section and comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link, purchase the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. Now, as always, you don't have to purchase this pattern in order to accomplish this project because I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step everything that I do to accomplish this stocking in this video. So if you want to have the pattern for step-by-step -step following along with me, or if you want to have it so you can make lots of these, which I plan on making a lot of these myself. If you want to make more than just one, it is nice to have that pattern with you so you can just reference it instead of watching my video over and over and over again, even though I love crocheting with you and I encourage you to watch this video as many times as you want. All right, so once you are ready to go, let's dive right into what materials I use to make these classic Christmas stockings. All right, the materials that we are going to need for the classic Christmas stocking will include a yarn that is a size four, size four weight worsted medium Aran 10, 12 ply or 8 WPI sized yarn here. I have the light color, it's an Aran color that I'm going to use for the cuff and the toe and the heel. And then the main color of the stocking will be this green forest color. The exact yarn I'm using is Loops and Threads Impeccable. So like I said, this is the color Aran, this is the color forest, and that red color that I used is the color cherry all the same brand, but you can use whatever you have on hand. So when I made my stocking, so this size stocking right here, I used one skein of the red right here, just one of these, and I had this much left over, okay? And I used this exact skein here for the Aran color or the white color on my stocking. And it's a little flat, but there's still a lot left over here. What I'm getting at here is, I don't think that you'd have enough material to make two of the exact looking stocking. However, if you were to flip flop the colors, you might have enough yarn material to flip flop and make two stockings, okay? Wanted to show you what we were working with and how much yarn would be left over. I am going to use a crochet hook size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. 
a pair of scissors and a yarn needle or tapestry needle to weave in those ends at the end of the project. Use whatever you have on hand. If you want to get your hands on exactly what I used, I will have links in both the description section and the comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link, purchase the item, and it will be shipped directly to you. Some of the links that I have here are affiliated links, which just means that the company will give me a very small commission if you purchase the item through them, which that commission will just go straight Straight back into my channel so I want to thank you so very much if you do decide to purchase any of the links that I have below. All right once you have gathered all of the materials that you want to use let's dive right into actually making the classic Christmas stocking. I'm going to begin the stocking working the toe first and then go, moving from the toe upwards. Now because we're starting with the toe we are going to be working in rounds which means we can either start with one of three different techniques. You can either use the magic ring, the chain two method, or the chain four method and then slip stitch to form a ring to work in. So I'm actually going to begin with the magic ring. So I'm going to take my yarn and two fingers. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my two fingers and form an X shape. All right and then I'm going to put my thumb over the X. I want this string to be enough over so you can clearly identify where that first yarn is. I'm going to take my crochet hook, go underneath that first yarn, grab that second yarn and pull that second yarn through. Remove my fingers but keep pinching that spot so that the ring doesn't come apart and then I'm going to slip stitch so that way that ring, I can move my fingers and that ring is now secure, all right? For round one, we are going to make seven half double crochet stitches in the magic ring or seven half double crochet stitches in your first chain of the chain two method. Or if you did the chain four and slip stitch, then you're gonna make seven half double crochet stitches in that chain four ring, okay? So let's go ahead and make seven half double crochet stitches one, two, three, six, and seven. Perfect. Now, if you're working the chain two method or even the chain four method, then you're done. If you're working the magic ring, what we're going to do now is we're going to take that little tiny tail and we're going to pull the little tiny tail and that will close that hole forming a really tight, little tight hole right there. Okay, to close round one, we're going to slip stitch into the very first half double crochet stitch. So insert into the first half double crochet stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull all the way through the loop on your crochet hook, and we've just closed round one. We are now ready for round two. And for round two, we are making two half double crochet stitches in every single stitch all the way around. What that is also known as is an increase half double crochet stitch. All right, you should end round two with a total of 14 half double crochet stitches. So here we go. Inserting our crochet hook into the same stitch we just slip stitched into. One, and then one more. two, perfect. Now make two half double crochet stitches in the next stitch. Three, four, 10, 11, 13, and 14. Perfect. That is where we want to stop. And this is why we count because if I didn't, if I didn't count, I would think that this next stitch space was a stitch space I needed to work into, but no, it's not. I just counted to 14. I wanted to stop at 14. So we have just finished round two. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet stitch slip stitch to officially close that round and now we're ready for round three so chain one the repeat pattern for round three is going to be increase half double crochet in the first stitch and then one half double crochet in the next stitch and then two half double crochets one two half double crochets 
one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round three, ending round three with a total of 21 half double crochet stitches. So here we go. One, two, and then one. One, two, and then one. 19, 20, and 21. Great, let's slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet stitch to close round three. One, two, three. We're now ready for round four. For round four, we will chain one. And the repeat pattern for round four will be making an increase half double crochet stitch in the first stitch. So two half double crochets in the first, and then one half double crochet in the next two stitches. And then two half double crochets, one, one. Two half double crochets, one, one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round four, ending round four with a total of 28 half double crochet stitches. So here we go. One, two, one, 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 two, one, one. 25, 26, 27, and 28. Perfect. All right, slip stitch to close round four. Perfect. For round five, we will chain one and we will make one, just one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You will end round five with a total of 28 half double crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, twenty seven, and twenty eight. Great. Okay, slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet stitch. Perfect, we are now ready for round six. Round six, we will chain one, and the repeat pattern for round six will be increase half double crochet in the first stitch, and then make one half double crochet stitch in the next three stitches. So one, one, one. And then make two half double crochets, and then one, two, three. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round six, ending round six with a total of 35 half double crochet stitches. All right. So one, two, one, and one, and one, just like that. And then one, two, one, two, three, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, and 35, perfect. Slip stitch to close round six. We are now ready for round seven. For round seven, we will chain one. And the repeat pattern for round seven is just making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. That's all we're doing for round seven. You should end round seven with a total of 35 half double crochet stitches. Here we go.
33, 34, and 35. Great, slip stitch to close round seven. Now for round eight, we are gonna chain one, and the repeat pattern for round eight will be making an increase half double crochet stitch in that first stitch space right there, and then one half double crochet stitch in the next four stitch spaces. One, two, three, four. And then increase half double crochet, and then one half double crochet in the next four stitch spaces. One, two, three, four. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round eight, ending round eight with a total of 42 stitches. So here we go. One, two, and then one, two, three, and four, just like that. Okay, and then one, two in the same stitch space, and then one, two, three, four. All right, you got this. I'll see you at the end of round eight. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, and 42. Great, slip stitch in the top to close round eight. Now for round nine, we're gonna chain one and the repeat pattern for round nine is just making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. We're going to end round nine with a total of 42 stitches. All right, let's do this. Two, three, four, five, 40, 41 and 42. Perfect, slip stitch into the bottom of that first half double crochet stitch and we have just closed round nine and we are done with the toe portion of our stocking. So what we're gonna do is we're going to grab our scissors. We're going to cut a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends when we're all done with the project. We're going to Yarn over that tail I just cut, pull that tail through the loop on my crochet hook and pull tight. And we've just tied off our work. Now let's grab color B or the second color that you wanna use or the main color of the stocking that you wanna use. In my case, I'm going to be using this forest green color. The tail, great. Now how I attach the new color is I will start with a long enough tail for me to weave in my ends at the end of the project. So this tail will be about five inches long or so, give or take. And then I will create my slip knot. I will attach my crochet hook, perfect. And we are ready to attach the yarn to our project. So looking at that same exact stitch space we just slip stitched into to close round nine, I'm going to insert my crochet hook into that same stitch space grab my yarn, yarn over, pull through, and pull that yarn through the loop on my crochet hook for a slip stitch, and we've just attached the new color to our project. All right, so now we're going to chain one, and we are prepared to move on to the actual foot part of our stocking. Now for the foot part of our stocking, I started the pattern over again, so that way it was kind of easier to follow. Oh, we've started a new step in the process. So for round one through, through round 14 of your new color, you're just going to chain one and make one half double crochet stitch in every single stitch all the way around your project. All right, and then slip stitch to close that round and then chain one and just continue making one half double crochet stitch in every stitch space all the way around. You're going to repeat this through the end of round 14 and I will meet you at the end of round 14 to show you how we manipulate the opening for the heel of the stocking. 
So actually what I'm gonna go ahead and do is quickly get around just to make sure that you are confident in what you are doing for this section. I don't wanna leave you with any questions here. We're just making one half double crochet stitch in every stitch. All right, coming to the end of what would be row one of our new color. Perfect, so just counted a total of 42 stitches. Now that's gonna be important. We wanna keep that same number of stitches here. Again, it looks like there's one extra stitch, but that's just the slip stitch that I used to close the round, okay? So be very careful, be very cautious. We wanna keep that count, all right? Okay, finding that very first half double crochet stitch slip stitch into the top of that to close round one. Perfect, this is what we will be looking at right here, the new color. And then all we're doing for the next round and through the end of round 14 is just chaining one and continuing on. Again, make sure you count every couple of rows to make sure you're sticking to that same count of 42 stitches. It'll be very helpful just to make sure you're staying on track. It'll be a big bummer if you don't count and you end up adding a stitch or losing a stitch and then the rest of the process will be a bit wonky for you, okay? So I think you're good and I will see you at the end of round 14. All right, just finishing the very last round of round 14 slip stitch. Great. So for round 15, we're going to start opening up the heel. So here's what we're going to do for round 15. I'm going to chain one, make one half double crochet stitch in the first 21 stitch spaces. Then we will chain 20 and make one half double crochet stitch to end round 15 before we slip stitch the round closed. So let's go ahead and do this together one half double crochet stitch in the first 21 stitch spaces. So one, two, three, four, eight, nine, 12, 13, 19, 20, 21, perfect. Now we will chain 20. One, two, three, eight, nine, 10, 17, 18, 19, 20. Then come around. We're gonna skip 20 stitch spaces all the way around. Find the very last stitch space for round 15. Half double crochet in that last, last stitch space. There we go, perfect. And then slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet stitch to close round 15. So this is what we're looking at right here. This big opening in the back and this is where the heel will go, okay? There we go. Okay, so for round 16, round 16 we will chain one. We will make one half double crochet stitch in every stitch and one half double crochet stitch in every chain all the way around. You should end round 16 with a total of 42 stitches. One, two, three, four, forty, forty-one, and of the half double crochet stitch there, 42. Perfect, slip stitch to close, round 16. Perfect, all right. So for round 17 through the end of round 39, all we are doing is chaining one and making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. We're starting to grow, so if I put this sideways, okay? We're starting to grow the stocking top now. Okay, so here is the toe, the foot, 
the heel and we're starting to grow the top here. So we wanna just keep going round after round after round, 42 stitches in each round, all just one half double crochet stitch in each stitch around. I will meet you at the end of round 39 to show you how we move on to the cuff. You are doing a fantastic job. Keep up the great work. All right, finishing up round 39 right here. Perfect, gonna slip stitch into that first stitch. Gonna grab our scissors, cut a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Then we're going to yarn over, pull that tail through the loop on our crochet hook, pull tight for a tie off. And now we are done with the top portion of our stocking. Here we go. This is what you should be looking at right now. Great. What we're gonna start working on next is the cuff portion of the stocking. So we're just gonna continue on. I'm gonna grab color A, the color that I used for the toe of my stocking. I'm gonna start with a long enough tail for me to weave in the ends, create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook, perfect. Starting with the very last stitch that I slip stitched into right here, insert my crochet hook into that same spot. Going to slip stitch into that same spot that I had already slip stitched into and that just attaches the new color to my project. I'm going to chain one and then I'm gonna continue making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around, a total of 42 half double crochet stitches. And I'm gonna continue working this through the end of row 47. Remember to count the number of stitches that are in this next round where we color change, so that way you do not put a stitch in the same stitch that we slip stitched into, okay? You're gonna to wanna to stop at 42 stitches and then slip stitch to close. You do not want to add that extra stitch because it'll throw you off count, okay? All right, you've got this. I will meet you at the end of row 47, round 47, to show you what we do next. And finishing round 47, here we go. Slip stitch to close round 47, and we are done with the cuff. Great, so grabbing our scissors, cutting long tail for us to weave in our end. Yarn over that tail, pull through the loop on our crochet hook, tie off, perfect. All right, and then this white cuff part, I will just fold over and it will look like that. Super cute, right? Okay, so the next part that I'm gonna focus on is the little loop on the top that we would hang the stocking from. So going, moving my stocking, I like to use the same color yarn for the loop that I had for the cuff. I usually start with about a five inch long tail to begin before I start my slip knot because I'm going to use this tail for something. All right, so attaching my crochet hook. We begin by chaining 21 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Perfect. For row one of our loop, I will single crochet in the second loop for my crochet hook. So one, two, single crochet, and then make one single crochet stitch in each chain all the way across. You will end with a total of 20 stitches here. All right, great. Once you've reached the very end of your chain, end of, end of your row, we're gonna go ahead and take our scissors, cut a five inch long tail here on this side then yarn over that tail, pull through for a tie off. Great. Next, we're gonna grab our yarn needle or tapestry needle. Take only one of those tails and thread it through the needle. There we go. Then take the two ends of your loop, 
and lay them on top of each other. And with the one tail that you just threaded through, you're going to join these two ends together. So keep this tail out. We're gonna use that for something else, but we're just gonna go round and round, attaching these two ends to each other. Really bonding or joining those two ends. And once you have really secured both of those ends, so it's a nice firm loop here, then what I do is take this loop, go around on the bottom, pull it through, but hold my thumb back, keeping some from going all the way through, holding my thumb back, there you go. So taking that loop that I held back, I'm going to twist it. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go underneath through that loop, pull through and it forms a knot that will secure. If it does not form a knot, then try it again, but this time take your needle and go the other direction. And then I will take my needle, go through that whole thing Pull it through, grab my scissors, and cut that small tail, and that part is done. Now taking the other really long tail, thread that through your yarn needle or tapestry needle. And with this tail, we're going to attach the loop to our actual stocking. So where I place this loop. So here is the heel part. I'm gonna make sure that these two are lined up so it's folded correctly all the way up. There we go. And then I will take, I'll pinch this side, go to where the color change is, and then on the inside of the work, one row down, I will go ahead, I don't want to sew the cuff down, but I will insert my yarn needle here, and that is where I'm going to attach my loop. Okay, just like that, and then however you want to attach your work, we're, we are just sewing the loop into the stocking with that tail. So if you even wanted to give yourself a longer tail, cut yourself a little more slack, so that way you can have even more tail to play with, you can. And then that is a firm hold. How I'm going to tie this off. So I'll again, use my thumb, go around my thumb into the work into the stitch, pull that through. Oh, I lost it. So I'm gonna actually re-thread. Okay, taking that loop, going to twist the loop so it makes that little X shape. Needle, go under and in, pull through for the knot. Perfect, then back in with my needle. There we go, it's a little tight. Wiggle through there, pull, pull, and that just cleans up that end, cut the tail, and now the loop is on the inside of the work, it's on the inside of the stocking, it looks really clean, and when we hang it, it just has a really cute look to it. That's how I do the loop and where I attach it. The last thing we want to do for the stocking is the heel. All right, so for the heel, I use the same color that I used for both the toe and the top cuff. Starting with the tail long enough for us to weave in the end at the end of the project. Slip knot. And I'm gonna come to this cuff and I'm gonna lay it flat 
this way so that the opening of the cuff is looking at me, okay? I'm going to attach my yarn right here. So come to this side of the work, look at the bottom here, see where there's already a stitch in this spot right here. This is where I want to attach my yarn, in the spot at the edge where there is already a stitch in there. If I can attach my yarn right here, I can avoid a hole being formed on this edge right here, okay? I'm going to chain one and I'm all set up to begin. So I will begin by making a decrease half double crochet stitch, including the same stitch that I slip stitched into. So yarn over, insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. Then I'm going to yarn over again insert my crochet hook into the next stitch space, yarn over, pull through. So now I have a total of five loops on my crochet hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all five loops and that is a half double crochet decrease. I just made two stitch spaces into one. Then I will make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch space across up to the very last two stitch spaces. I'll leave those unworked. All right. And then looking, last two stitch spaces here. Yes, this stitch space right here has a half double crochet stitch in it. Again, for this particular round, round one, I want to be working in that stitch space that already has a stitch in it to avoid that big gaping hole that can form right there. Okay, so got one, then yarn over, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. Make sure you have those five loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over and pull through all five loops. Perfect. Okay, we have just done or accomplished the bottom part of the stocking heel. What I'm gonna do, there should be a total of 20 stitches across just to help guide you here. So count to 20, make sure you have that, and then we can flip it. So flipping it, I just flip it upside down, and then I start working along the top, starting with a decrease half double crochet. So in using that same stitch space that already has a stitch in it, Look like that. Yarn over, pull through. Then make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch across, leaving the last two stitch spaces empty or unworked. All right, so we've got one, two right here, so one, two, oh, I'm gonna back it up because it looks like this loop kind of came undone. There we go, five loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through all five for a half double crochet decrease. And then here on the top, you should also be able to count 20 stitches accomplished. So 20 stitches along the bottom, 20 stitches along the top, and then you have accomplished round one of the heel. Go ahead and slip stitch into the top of that decrease half double crochet stitch, and we have closed round one. Now let's move on to round two of the heel. We're gonna chain one. We're gonna start with a decrease half double crochet stitch. So go ahead and use the first stitch, which I just slip stitched into, and the next stitch. Then make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch across, leaving the last two stitch spaces unworked. One, two. Do a half double crochet decrease, five loops, there we go. 
on the bottom here, you should end with a total of 18 stitches and then flip and let's start working along the top. So again, it's decrease half double crochet, then one half double crochet in each stitch across, ending with a decrease half double crochet to close out the round. Okay, decrease, half double crochet, and slip stitch to close round three. Perfect. For round four, we're just gonna continue this process. And actually for round four, five, six, and seven, we're going to continue this process where we will just begin with a decrease half double crochet stitch, then make one half double crochet stitch in between leaving the last two stitch spaces unworked, working a decrease half double crochet stitch in those last two stitches, then flipping, beginning with a decrease half double crochet, then one half double crochet stitch across and ending with a decrease half double crochet stitch. So we are now on round, so that's one, two, three, we're now on round four. Go ahead and repeat this process through the end of round seven of the heel and I will meet you at the end of round seven to show you what we do next. All right, and then at the end of round seven, so slip stitch into the top here. Perfect, okay, so at the end of round seven, you'll still notice a pretty big hole here for the heel. What I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you take your scissors and cut a pretty significant tail here. Tail, then yarn over, pull through the loop, pull tight for a tie off here, great. And then what I'm gonna have you do is take your yarn needle and I'm gonna actually have you weave the tail in and out of your stitches that are along the top here. So just in and out. Go. All the way around. Perfect, and then once you've made it all the way around the whole heel, you'll pull that string and that will close the hole of the heel, making that heel look perfectly bent. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my crochet hook, I'm gonna come in, yarn over that tail, pull through so I formed a loop then yarn over again and pull through that loop for a slip knot. And I'm gonna do that one more time. Into the work, yarn over, pull through. So I have a loop, then yarn over and pull through that loop and tie. Perfect, great. So here is what I'm looking at right now. There's my heel. I have a really long tail and where I'm at right now is my stocking is complete. All I have to do now is weave in my ends and I am good. So these ends are gonna be easy. Just do color to color. This end's gonna be easy. The big one here is I want you to take this really long tail with your yarn needle and I really want you to follow along where we did those decreases. Make sure that you've closed up any significant holes if you want. You have enough yarn here where you can just weave in your ends all the way through both sides to close up any particular large hole that you may want to close. If you feel like your stitches are looking good and you're not really worried about anything, then do a quick weave in of your end and you're done. Other than that guys, this is your classic Christmas 
stocking. It's a great size, totally usable, very strong, very sturdy, and depending on what material you used, it's also machine washable. Pretty awesome, right? All right, guys, what did you think of the classic Christmas stocking? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd also like to know what colors you're deciding to use to make your stockings. That would be so much fun to read. Also, if you notice a, a question in the comment section below and you know the answer to it and I haven't responded yet, feel free to help each other out. I really want to embrace this community that we have here where we help each other grow and we just help each other have the best crochet experience. That's what it's all about is just having fun and getting through this together. So I embrace your help. Thank you so much. You guys are incredible. I appreciate this community so much. Love you guys. Also, if you had fun with this project, you might also really enjoy these projects right here. More Christmas tutorials that I have created or check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for crocheting with me today hanging out with me today. I always love spending time with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.